Hello everybody, good afternoon. Uh, in the name of the festival, I'm Philippe Cliva, General Secretary of the festival. And uh, in the name of the festival, I'm really happy to welcome you on this discussion. Uh, for us, it's really important to present during the festival not only films, but also discussions about themes that uh, has to do with, uh, with films. Uh, we are really glad uh, to have the possibility to make a collaboration with the Cine Bulletin, the newspaper, official uh, professional newspaper of cinema in Switzerland. And this with the support of SSA and Swiss Image, that uh, we uh, have a, a big support since a lot of years, and we are happy to open this new opportunity to collaborate. I wish you a very good afternoon and a great discussion and I let the place for the important people. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. I'm really glad uh, to see all of you here. Uh, thank you to Vision du Réel for um, giving us the opportunity to um, touch on that topic, um, paying the protagonists or not. So we're going to discuss that today together. Um, just a quick word, we are um, the industry paper of the Swiss uh, cinema and audiovisual branch. Um, you can find the magazine on the back uh, of the room and uh, some tote bags, so please feel free to take some and discover what we do. Uh, we cover political, economics, technical, aesthetic uh, topics about the Swiss industry and the Swiss films. So, also, this uh, whole discussion is recorded, so just so you know. Um, <laughs> um, and, well, the topic of today, should the protagonists of creative documentaries be paid? Um, they're not actors, but they are at the core of the documentaries. They um, grant the, the filmmakers um, a huge personal implication, sometimes for years, and we want to discuss here the ethical and practical um, sides of um, their uh, participation in documentaries. So I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today. I'll start with uh, Francis Carrec, who is a producer here in Switzerland. Hello, Francisca. Um, she's the founder of uh, Rec Film Production in Zurich. Um, uh, it's been established in 2000, so it's been 17 years. Congratulations. Um, she works mostly on documentaries and film essays um, and has worked in uh, various countries, in Pakistan, in India, and in different African countries, as well as in Switzerland and Europe, of course. Um, she has done more than 25 films with Rec Film, and she presented um, Saturday the next film of Anka Schmidt, Harry, which is in production, so we're waiting for it. Um, Next with me here is Stéphane Breton, uh, who's a director. Hello, Stéphane. Um, he is also an ethnologist um, and has lived in New Guinea for years. And his first film in 2001 was Eux et moi, about a village there in New Guinea. And um, he works alone doing camera and sound um, because he says, and we, maybe we will discuss that too, that the one who looks is also part of the story and even and especially if he's behind the camera. Um, so he is here because he will be doing a masterclass on Thursday at uh, 10, so you're of course all invited to come. And some of his films are screened here in the festival, or all of them maybe, yeah, all of them. Um, and the, the next one uh, is also in production, it's called Fille du Feu, um, and it is about the female fighters of Kurdistan. And last but not least, we have here Lesh Kowalski, um, who is a director. Hello, Lesh. Hello. Um, he's from Polish origin, but has lived and studied in New York, and is now living in France. And also the UK. And the UK. Um, his first film was about a documentary, a documentary about the origin of punk rock, and his oh, first film, it's listed as the first, as a director. Yeah. It's a mistake. Yeah. Can you <laughs> okay? Can you grab the mic and tell us that again? No, no, I, it's good to be accurate, but b 
because the uh, the roots of everything are important. So my first films were experimental films, and, and, and I, then I made some porno films and a documentary about porno films. And the, the issue of money became a very big issue in those films. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll go back to that in a short time. Um, so all over his career, he filmed uh, Outcast, Marginalized People, and for the last, uh, well, not for all his films, but some, some of them, a good amount of them, and on the l for the last film, um, he touched on the subject of poverty and uh, environment a lot, so I think that will also be of interest for our discussion. Um, and you can see his last film, who's on uh, international competition here today at uh, 6.30 at the Salle Communale. It's called I Pay For Your Story. Exactly. Um, so let's start. So my first question, obviously, is very uh, concrete. So have you, all of you, ever paid a protagonist? If not, why? And if you did, what was the justification? So maybe I'll start with you, Francisca. Have you ever paid a protagonist? Um, I never paid a protagonist as uh, salary. On the pay role, lo uh, never I had a protagonist, but it's more than complicated. Hmm? Uh, I don't pay them as salary, but we are paying something back, hmm? and a lot. If it's sense, if it gives sense, and I think we have to discuss really precise because in every case it's different to find the right way to pay and on which way to pay. I wouldn't say pay to have to give back anything. Hmm? Um, if would be precise, I had paid if I'm doing or we are doing a um, film about artists. We have uh, produced uh, Irene Schweitzer, for example, a famous Swiss, uh, Swiss uh, jazz um, pianist. That's a performance of her, you know, and uh, w it was clear we will pay her because we are paying also the rights then together. But that's another discussion, okay? I say I don't pay because I think the relationship between us and the, di the director and the um, protagonist in our films is so, so, so important because we can work only we if we have a big trust, a beautiful way, a strong way together because our films, we are not shooting one day with anybody. We are shooting weeks, months. We are shooting perhaps short, but we are visiting them before. And I think for our films, it's so important that the director find really a good way with the protagonists. For that, we need a lot of time. And we have then also decided when is the right moment to speak about rights and money. And that depends from the, the, the moment. And I never want to crush the trust what the director, author has built up with the protagonists. That's really dangerous, and I think sometimes money can break down because you go to, to a total other level of discussion. For me, it's important that the protagonists understand what we are doing, because we are doing, the director is doing also a creative, artistic work, and we can do it also if we go together away. And that means the protagonists need a lot of information from our side and to understand, because without any understanding of them, he cannot be responsible, because he has to be responsible, responsible. responsible also, yeah. as we have to be also both sides. So okay. to sum it up, it will be the relationship first and building respect and, and understanding with the protagonist. And if there's a talk about money, it will come afterwards. Yes. Before shooting, but after We try to do it before shooting. But it, it's not all the time it's possible. We had also, when we shot it uh, last, some years ago in the south of uh, Egypt, we had uh, a very famous storyteller and my, uh, 
My director said, wait, we have to wait. Then we had to wait. But I like, as producer, to have the signature and uh, this side of uh, collaboration before we start shooting. We try to. Not all the time is possible. The situation for you is uh, <coughs> also a bit different. Um, yes. The, the only time I paid for someone directly for being in front of the camera was a couple of euros uh, that the man asked and he stayed in front of the camera for a couple of minutes. So I realized that when you pay for show, for appearance, uh, it gets shorter and shorter. Well, it, happens, it happened only once. So there, there are other ways. But I think money is very important, yes, of course. And it should be dealt with. It's not for free. So how do you deal with it? I don't pay for people to be in front of the camera. I pay for a house or for a place in which I stay, or for a car I need to use to go to a place, or for food, you know. So my presence is beneficial, okay. but it's not filming that is beneficial. I, I take care to, I, I pay attention to, <coughs> to that. So that you won't be a burden for the people, but it well, would be benefit, even Well, you even are a burden. Neutral, if you stay beneficial. three months in a village, you are a burden. But it has to play on, on another level than just you pay for <coughs> having people uh, being shot or being filmed. That's a bit uh, what you actually show in uh, the first short that you made, Eux et moi. I don't We pay. I don't pay for, being, uh, for them being filmed. No, you don't. But you, you make a that a topic of the film. Yes. This, not the money, but the The topic the of the film is not my paying for them to be in the film. It's for uh, me being with them, trying to get Shell money to buy a bride, uh, to do some work, to pay for food. So it's a lot of collaterals, um, not collaterals, a lot of uh, things on the side. But I think we, sh we should never, I mean, I, I don't want to pay for the, for the actual filming. But I don't want to be, uh, Uh, hard on money on the other side, on the other hand. You know, I don't think it's fair. If you, if you stay a long time with people, you have, you have to, benefit, to be beneficial to them. So I'm turning to you, Lesh. Your position well, is a bit different. <laughs> well, no, I mean, um, okay, I just want to respond to what you said. You were presenting a semantical, uh, you're, you're, you've presented a semantical answer. Mm. The point is, whether you pay them directly or not, There's, there's an involvement of, of payment in your reality. And, and you cannot say that I'm not paying them directly or indirectly because it's a lie. Because in fact, if you're giving them some money, if you give them some money for a house or whatever, they're benefiting from you, of course. which they should. Of course. But it's still a way of paying someone. Because if they, you know, when, when all of every film I made has been an issue in my life from the very first films. Mm. What do you do with the people that you're making the movie with? Yeah. Well. They expect something from you. Of course. You know, and I that the agree. expectations are always a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But the expectations have to be met somehow. The worst thing to do is to film someone and run away and you know, to go back to your country because usually or your place of business or whatever and they never hear from you again. Of course. Because of course. they are cheated forever. Of course. And they will say, Well, what's going on? But let me backtrack. Yeah. The entire I mean, this is such an important issue because we live in right now we live in the time of extreme capitalism. We're in a very capitalist country. Switzerland is very privileged. Um, we have um, we have a thing that I would call soft uh, soft power. Now, what is soft power? Uh, and this is in the context of what we're talking about. Okay, let's take Donald Trump and Ivanka Trump, right? Okay, Ivanka Trump gets tremendous amount of coverage for free because the media loves to pay f uh, to to write about her. But she gets benefits from it, she, and so does Trump. They get benefits from it because the more her picture is in newspapers, the more the articles are written about it. She's not getting paid directly, but she gets benefits from it because she's able to sell her product, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one level of soft advertising, which is, which is completely unethical as far as I'm concerned because most of the journalists want to write about those people because they'll make more money, and journalists hide behind that. I mean, I've, I've been to art school, and I've been to journalism school, and this idea of money is kind of a pain for, the, for people. It's kind of a, an, an old idea from, from journalism that goes back to the 19th and 20th century. 
and it evolved in the 20th century, but the idea was that it's not ethical to pay for your somebody's story because a person can lie and, 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 and perform for you. And I find this kind of to be, you know, like, okay, if you're working for the New York Times, the New York Times uh, artist, uh, writer cannot go and you know, say, I'll give you $10 for your story, whatever, and I kind of understand that. But there's still this kind of relationship, which is the fact that this journalist is making money off of this person's suffering or, or happiness or whatever, and so is the entire editorial staff and the, uh, and the owners of, the, of, of this newspaper. So I think that we have to look at this thing in many different ways. Uh, can I, all, I, I think that's very important. If you say a journalist has a story, mm -hmm. thanks to the person, I have to say we are speaking here about creative documentary. We don't have a, 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 a work or a film or a story only because we have this person. We have a work, a piece, what we have to do. And I think there is a lot of uh, impact and knowledge from the director's side. And the protagonists are important beside people, you know. And that's something different. Yeah, and uh, I think the yes. problem is really if we are talking, I would, I would like to be very really precise. I think we have to pay, surely we are paying all the, the people, we have to give back. But we have to find out what is the right thing. And often it's something without money. If you are doing a film, have some success for a certain person, it's absolutely important. If you are shooting in Addis Abeba with uh, s street sweepers, we pay by side. We pay a little bit here, a little bit there, but we don't pay a salary. And well, for yeah, them, I mean you is, can is give is them back, for example, the respect of their community. You can give them back so much more with our work than money because we cannot change the life of them. I mean, this is no, but I think we all agree <laughs> that people should benefit from a film. Yeah. The only thing that is different is for what should you pay? If you pay for appearing in front of a camera, it means you are transforming their appearance into work. And that's my problem, because when they appear in, when people appear in front of a camera and it is a work, they will try to provide you with something. And it is exactly that that I don't want. So I, I pay for my presence, obviously, but not for them to do the work that I don't want them to do. Precisely what I want is that they do not work in front of the camera. But that's um, my own bias. So that will be your red line, like don't... Uh, no, it's not a red line, it, it depends what you want. If you're a journalist, to come, you have 10 minutes to have an interview, most of the time people would pay. But I'm staying for three months and I'm not doing interviews, so I'd, I, what would I pay? That's interesting because this is actually the setting of your movie, then you ask people to tell their story for money and you, they sit down and they tell their story. Yeah, I mean, the, the, um, the people that I approached uh, to tell the stories are obviously, um, well, in this context of this film, it's the neighborhood where I grew up in uh, when I was a kid, or I, I lived in for a while. And this neighborhood, like most neighborhoods in America, in, 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 big, in small and big cities, have changed, and, and many of them have become sort of ghettoized. So uh, the, 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 one, the first generation of... of uh, People who were like Polish or Italian would go there because they were poor and they would have this middle class neighborhood. Then their kids, like myself, would leave and the new people that would stay there were usually um, poorer and in many cases are black and poor whites, <coughs> which are called uh, white trash in America. So that's what my neighborhood became. All right, so what's the context of this neighborhood? The context is that these are poor people and they see me coming in and they, I have my film crew. Uh, or my, my, my assistant would be my film crew. I, it's, I shoot and I take the sound, but my, my, my camera and, my, and the things that sort of make me an outsider. And they look at me and they say, aha, what does he want from us? And, they, and, I'll, t and I'll tell you something. In America, because this is where I shot this, even though I w worked around the world, poor people look at, poor black people, poor white people look at someone with money in a very special way. There's very little communication because they are at the very bottom of the economic scale. So... I thought, okay, what can I, you know, how can I be provocative in this? Because I'm going to, into this area and I want to get as many stories as possible. So my idea was, okay, 
yes, I'm going to make this neon sign. And I put this, I hung up the sign and said, I'm going to pay for your story. Now, that immediately opened up a dialogue with the people in the neighborhood because people said, oh, you're going to pay for the story. And then it was not the amount of payment that was important. It was the idea, aha, you're going to pay for my story, then we talk about it. And I could not pay a lot of money because I, had, I shot maybe 200 people, and that's, you know, I, it's a documentary. So I said, okay, I can't pay you a lot of money for your story, but I can give you a token amount of $15. Because I, I figured out this way, okay, if someone is with me for you know, 15 or 20 minutes, I said, okay, you're going to be getting twice the minimum wage. In America, the minimum wage is $7.50. So I figured, okay, if I, that's two times that is $15. And immediately they got a dialogue going. People start thinking. But you know what happened? None of these people really were that interested in the story. What they were really interested in, in, in I mean, they, they were not interested in getting paid for the story. What they were really interested in was getting their story out because there's no one to listen to their story. And that became really incredible. And they, people thanked me for, 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 uh, you know, for, for filming them. Not that I wanted to thank you, but at the same time, a family would come and I would give everybody in the family $15. So it would be $100 or, or $75. So, you know, my budget kept increasing. So it's kind of a provocation. Now, this film was sent, this film was sent to a, film, a few film festivals in America, major film festivals, and I won't mention who the people are and what the film, uh, what the, but here's a, a text that I got from one of the film festivals. Um, this person says that it's a very dangerous film to show because, and, 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 and it's not clear why, but here's what this person said. Uh, let's see. I believe the idea of paying subjects for the contribution to a, f a documentary is important, but I'm perplexed by the low amount offered to in this film. I mean, and 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 this is a a letter coming from the capitalist system, right? You know, this film festival that survives off of films, and 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 you know that are documentaries. And those people there are getting paid to have a job where they present films, but they think this film is too dangerous, and I'm not paying. You know, I didn't pay enough money. I mean, what kind of dialogue is that? It's precisely why they should show this film. First of all, it's a good film. It's a very powerful film because there's no bullshit in it. But that's another story. I mean, I made the film, so I'm, I'm going to say that. But for this person to to have this kind of line drawn and saying that I have to pay more for the story because he continues in this is saying, what if this film is is successful and makes a lot of money in a box office. Well, that's bullshit. How many documentaries make a fortune in the box office? It's such, I, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it's, 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 it's perplexing to me. So he's, the idea is, well, you should have had a contract with these people where they get a percentage of this box office and all that kind of stuff. Well, imagine if I have to explain all this thing to somebody in the first 15 minutes of meeting them, is like, okay, you'll get a percentage of it. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not a real, uh, he's not presenting a, a, a real argument. The reason why he said that this film is dangerous is because it shows the real reality of how black people live in my neighborhood. And these people are criminals, most of them, not because they want to be criminals. And most people don't want to be criminals uh, in, in, in America specifically. They just have to survive. So they're dealing drugs, et cetera, et cetera. And these people are very honest about that because the film is presenting something that goes beyond the, the sort of the, the normal kind of uh, politically correct presentation of, of poor people's lives. So, you know, these, it's a very complicated subject. But just, I want to go back to something you said, which is that most people were more interested in getting their story out than in the actual money that you were um, proposing. So do you think that you could have made the same film without giving those $15? Um, I mean, We, I'm not talking about like you should or you should not, but let's do a little um, like little mind trick. Like, do you think it would have been the same uh, film if you I don't know spent um, the time there enough time to have the same amount of stories without the money? Probably, probably. But I mean, I spent six months in this neighborhood, you know, t getting to know people. But the idea of of what see my idea is, is my question was what is a poor person's value? in society, how much is there, what do they have to sell? They, they, there's no place for them to work, so the, 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 thing, the thing they have is this incredible personal history, and that personal history is worth money. Because if you look at American reality television, and you know, all those gun uh, shows where people are being captured by the police, etc., who are d dealing drugs, the capitalist system is making money off of all, these mi off, off the, off all that misery. 
And these people who told their stories, are they have an amazing, um, they've built up this amazing history because they have to survive in America. Surviving capitalism is not easy, and it, that story is worth something. So that was the, the kind of discussion that we got into by saying with this neon sign that I pay for your story. I don't know if it would be the same. It would be a little different, of course. But that was the beginning of, bu uh, of building a relationship. And people were walking by, sometimes by the house. And they would see the sign, and they would come in, and we'd have a little talk. And I said, I don't want to tell you too much. I'd, I'd rather tell you on camera so you can react. So in that respect, that kind of spontaneity would be different if I didn't use this technique. Um, but I think, excuse me, but I think the payment of money is very important because it legitimates the fact, so it gives it value. If someone talks and is being paid for it, it means that what he says has value. And most of the time, it does not. And it's like in Melanesia, in New Guinea, people exchange money, shell money for whatever reason, and as soon as they give money, things are important. It's like a notorial uh, uh, seal, you know? It doesn't mean that they get something, it means that the thing is important, has value, and has social value, has collective value. It's recognition. Um, if you value. want, yes, also. It's legitimacy, recognition, uh, official dom, it becomes official, it becomes public. If you s and most of the time, and, but the camera will sometimes play this, um, uh, this role. For instance, in New Guinea, when, I would, when people had something important to say, they would ask me to take out the camera. And they would not speak until the camera was there. And I think Monet is exactly playing the same role. It puts things on a acknowledgeable plane. It becomes uh, interesting, legitimate. People should listen to it. Do you want to react, Francisca? Yeah, I was only thinking about the relationship between between payment and um, and the rights, you know, if you say it's in the that's the experience what I have also in the moment when it's the right moment to speak about the rights, and that's different to speak about the rights in Ethiopia than to speak about rights in uh, Zurich or in Berlin or somewhere here. Then it's the moment where you and you ask, I'm asking for the signature to use the material. That give, gives also an other kind of responsibility between us. And I think that's also process. That's only what possible in a place where signatures do exist, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for that, that, I said as first, every film you have to find an other way. We don't have really rules, you know. I think in your case, it wasn't so difficult to have a signature. I know. In New Guinea? Yeah. They don't even know what is a signature. Yeah, but that I say. So I would not extract that way from them. To them, yeah. Uh, well. So how did you deal with uh, image right, for example? It there, is it no there is you no image right. No question. There is no image right. There is no image right in New Guinea where I was, uh, and in many places there is no image right. And what you say about your neighborhood is very true, but it's very true because. Uh, in our system, being paid for talking is something that is understandable. But there are places in, in which when you pay for something, for, for someone to talk, would on the contrary be absolutely crazy. So you, you would pay for food, transport, accommodation, whatever, of course, but not for talking. So your, your case is, uh, I, 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 am, I have absolutely no problem with that, but it, it depends on where you are, mm -hmm. you know? Paying for talk in New Guinea would be absolutely crazy. Yeah. People will Agree accept totally. the money, maybe, Agree totally. maybe not, maybe not. They maybe they wouldn't even accept the money. I, I'm just curious, if, some, if, a, if a, one of those people came to you mm. in Switzerland and they were they said they would want to make a film about you. Mm. It would be interesting how their approach would be. Maybe they wouldn't even consider the fact that they should pay you because it's it's not a part of their yeah. their, their their idea well. about about life. You know, it's, they live in a different system. Well, they they would want uh, some money to to come out of it, but in a different context. That is marriage payment, contribution to a homicide payment, things like that. 
and you would have to do it if you if you wanted to be uh, reasonable and uh, uh, appreciated. You would have to do that. But paying for to <coughs> paying for talk there would be probably the most craziest thing uh, they, they they would hear about. You know. So of course, paying. I entirely agree, but according to the context and the rule of the game. But your rule of the game is perfectly clear and perfectly fine, I think. Perfectly fine. For me, it becomes more difficult when I have to spend a long time with people. Because then, you know, people get tired of you. And then you have to start... Fi I mean, there's many ways of paying, paying people. Uh, if you're working with... You know, I mean, f for some reason or other, most of my films are with people who are not... who don't have much money. They're poor or they don't have a lot of money. So buying a meal, buying a beer... This kind of thing, you know, money for me for taking a metro. These are forms of payment, but it's not. A, you're not paying for their performance. You're just helping them survive. Right. And and and, and it's very important. But mm -hmm. it also, when you spend a long time with people, like a few months when you're filming them, people get tired of you too, and and then you are infringing on their personal reality because of course you want to present that, and then then it gets very strange. The whole money thing. And um, I, I hate the moment of signing a release, of asking for a release. And I, I rarely do that anymore because it presents, well, <laughs> in my early films were in America. In America, the contract for signing something could be like this. So the person's reading all this stuff. Oh, I can use your image in advertising. I can use your image this way. I can do this. I can use your voice. And people say, well, well, shit, you know, what do I get out of this? You know <laughs> what I mean? You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's insane. It's insane. I, had, I had an experience... Especially so that in France, even if you sign, you can, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, have, a, have a trial. You can take it back. You can take it back. Yeah. No, I, a few years ago, about ten years ago, I had a, uh, and I was going. I, I made a road movie in, in Poland on a highway that was built mm. by the, the Nazis. Hitler's highway. Hitler's highway, mm. and and so I went to England to try to raise money, and we had a meeting, I think, with. BBC or Channel 4, somebody well-known. And the, the meeting was going well, although I, it, it, I, I, yeah, I don't like dealing with those, that kind of corporate kind of thing because I wanted to have carte blanche so I can do whatever I want in the film. So the, this producer, this uh, commissioning editor said to me, well, we like this idea, etc." And especially the part about the prostitutes because prostitutes were living on this highway. And he said, but are you, how, are you going to pay the prostitutes? And I looked at him, and I know I knew where he's going. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, what do you think? What do you, you know? If I'm going to spend time with them, and you know where the, they have to leave their their professional position to to spend time with me, and they're not making money, I think that I have to give them something, you know." Some, and he said, "No, well, I can't. I can't agree to make this film with you or finance this film because if the news media, if the media finds out that the BBC or Channel 4 or whatever it was is financing prostitutes in Poland, we're going to be, you know, destroyed." <laughs> and this was really, this really got me mad. And I said, "Listen, I'm really happy that we had this, uh, this discussion now, but let me tell you about these these women who are prostitutes. These were women from, um, they were ethnic Turks, mm -hmm. right?" Women who can never go back home because they worked, they're Muslims, they worked as prostitutes. Women who were sending the money back to their children to raise their children. These are the women that were working on this highway. Of course I would have to pay, give them something. It's not a question of paying, but if I'm spending a few weeks with a, with a woman who's working on this highway servicing truck drivers and I give her nothing, I mean, I w you know, wh <laughs> how do I deal with that, you know? Uh, so yeah, so fuck the BBC and Channel Four, yeah. and you know what? And they're and they're they're sinking because the the entire see the thing is that this whole conversation is really about ethics. Well, there's no fucking ethics in in capitalist society. What do these people in my neighborhood know about ethics? They were born without ethics. There is no ethics. So the ethics are created by the filmmaker and by the situation, and the filmmakers will because the people can feel something from you. So if you give them ten dollars because you don't have twenty dollars. They'll say, oh, yeah, okay, thanks, G give me the, the $10. And when someone doesn't have money, $10 could be an awful lot for them. But I'll tell you something. I can never go behind the fucking walls where the corporate people are, 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 are the ones who should be filmed because they have lawyers protecting them. So even if I offer them $1,000 to film something, they'll say, no, well, we, have to, we need to know what you're filming for what, blah, 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 blah. And it's bullshit. And this is one of the problems of our society is that the people who should be filmed are not being filmed. Because first of all, we can't afford that. We don't have to, you know, you'd have to give you know, Donald Trump millions to be filmed because he probably would agree to anything. And then he would have lawyers, et cetera, et cetera, to sign these agreements. 
well, I mean, you know, is this ethical? So this but conversation is about something kind of abstract and bullshit in a way. Yeah, absolutely, but also it's very ethnocentric. <laughs> that is, we are talking about only about here. And there are many different places in the world where payment follows um, a certain pattern. And for instance, in, in many places in New Guinea, if you pay immediately for what you've consumed or for the work that has been done, you are insulting. So you should pay after a, a few days and not for that. Of course, everybody knows, but it should not be thrown at the face of the people you're talking to. Otherwise, you are insulting them. So you should pay indirectly later and in a like paying a beer, buying a meal, if such a thing exists in the deep of the forest. But you have to play along the rule, and, and the rule is local. It's not yours. And so ethics is very often ethnocentric, you know, rather than anything else. I think that's very, for me, I think it's a very, very interesting point, because if you say there is no ethic, but you say we have to build up our ethics if in the process where we are working. And I think every time when we work in another, in another culture, we first we have to learn so much but because often yeah. we are really doing wrong things. But what Lesh Kowalski is saying is that he, he plays according to the, to the local ethics. That's it. That's yeah, but the local ethic is not one ethic. But you make your ethic. <laughs> when I land... <laughs> when well, I you I understand, I but you understand also the ethics of the woman you have. Exactly. And yeah. you play yeah. along with you that. You go with that, yeah. You exactly. have to. Because, you have that's to of course. because as a human being, that's all you have. You of know? course. I have my camera. I have a little bit of money from somebody or Arte or whatever. And I'm here and I want to play, play with you. But there's another part of this, which is really interesting too, which is a lot of the people that I film with, like for instance, the farmers in Poland who are fighting against shale gas. I spent two years with them. Well, the interesting thing about the filmmaker in that situation, me, me being the filmmaker, was that I joined the fight against uh, shale gas with them. So I didn't have to pay for them, anything, because we were comrades. So it was, I felt sometimes like I'm making a propaganda film against shale gas. But they gave me houses to live in, they fed me good you know, Polish food. And, I, and, and it, was, it was an extraordinary experience. And there was never a question of paying anything. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, we were, we, I was putting their message out, you know, that they're fighting against Chevron, and they want to win this fight. And it's a very hard fight. So it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a, I was a I don't, I'm not an activist filmmaker, but I took on the role of activist. And, 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 and the, the people that I had a problem with was the Chevron cameramen who were spying on us and filming us. So in order to, for them to not to be able to use the footage, we would, we would do this. It was like a signal to, you know, so, so it, was, it was like, I don't know, like, again, you have to invent your own ethics and, and, and find mm -hmm. your, your position. And I think in a lot of cases, like for your, because I don't know your films, but if you're making these ethnographic films, in a way, you're there to help protect these people and their future. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of on their side, and uh, maybe they understand that a little bit. But isn't that a bit optimistic? That you're actually helping, making a difference, well, we, putting we words Chevron. out there. We beat Chevron. We beat Chevron. We beat Chevron. So is it optimistic? No, it was good. I mean, I really felt great. It was one of the great experiences of my life because I also learned about farming. You know what I mean? So no, y y y if you present somebody's story in a way that makes it that's very honest, I think that whoever sees it in the world will understand something about it, and that's a yeah. form of help. What do you think yeah. about that? Well, I, I'm making a film now with Kurds in Syria. I've been doing that, doing that for the last two years and a half. And uh, I sleep where they sleep. I eat their bad food. I wake up at three in the morning. There is no way I would even consider paying anything. I am like the troops, like those women and men who are about 20. Uh, there is no way I would even consider paying them. And if I say that, they would get absolutely mad. And once I wanted to offer a goat for, uh, for dinner for everybody, and they said, no, you are our guest, don't do that. Don't mention it ever again. So you have to play along the rule. If, if you want to show off your power, then you insist for paying, you know? In some cases, not always, but in some cases you have to be very, 
you have to play along the rules, the But local rules. Do you think you can um, be in this role because also because you're alone? That if you would be with the film crew, ah, it would be yeah. very different? Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. You've never been uh, filming with the film alone. crew? Always alone, yeah. What about you two? Does it make a difference for, for, for the director or... Well, let's start. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase. Um, if you send out a film crew instead of just a director to, to film, do you think the relationship to the protagonist is different because the balance of power is different? We, we <coughs> I think the balance is different if you would go directly with a film crew. But if we are making a film, I, I hate the word shoot, If you are filming, then we are preparing a film and the director goes to the protagonist before and they are two persons. And she has to learn, her has to learn what are the rules, local rules. Often I give, uh, if, if they, for example, white women, uh, the last film, what we have shot in Russia, in French, in Germany and finally in Qatar, not in Egypt. Uh, The director who don't know the country or the culture goes together with a cultural uh, guide for in their researches. And then you have a platform that you can come again and again with the crew. Because then, I think in the moment of the crew, then you have not so much time. You have often, that's something a little bit difficult. If then we have to say, listen, we have to film in one week. We don't stay here three months. And then it's a little bit this apparat, this uh, eigendynamic, this strong way how you have to film with the crew. And in this kind of, um, mm. of um, setting, when you have to film in a certain amount of time and you, have, you need your protagonist to be available for filming, will you... Um, a bit as the same as uh, Lesh was talking with the, the, the prostitute on the highway, compensate for the work they will not be sure. able to do? That's sure. So you would basically we pay... Because they cannot work in these days, mm -hmm. or they, we go together with them to the, her work, but perhaps they have to ask the chief if we can come. And for all that, they are working for us, and so we give them back what we can. But we have to discuss what they really need. Some of them say, I would like to have the material in the end from my ma family, or would it be possible to shoot all this together? Another one says, I, for us it would be important that my child can go to school. You have to find a way. You have to find the rule local and concrete. Now I have a very, very practical question. How do you put all those different kinds of costs into a formal budget? <laughs> Uh, you lie. You have to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it, it, if, if Arte or whatever sees the budget and you're paying all this stuff, they're immediately going to say, you're paying them? What I mean, you have to lie. And this is... We, exactly, yeah. We, yeah we, we, we. And it's total bullshit, you know, but I just want to comment on something because it's, it, it's an important question, but the simple answer is that you have to lie. Um, the, um, but you shouldn't say that too loud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> If anybody, you, if need our, uh, some, you need some space. We exactly, yeah. <laughs> It's, it, no, but I mean, I don't like to film with a crew. I like to film alone because every time you have somebody with you, if you have one person, myself, and then the second person changes the ambiance, and yeah, yeah, the yeah. third person changes it more, and suddenly you're making a film about us yeah. and not that. So I'd like to be alone, um, but sometimes oh, I cannot be yeah. alone. <clears throat> the, the the other thing is that. Commenting on what you said was that uh, a few a few months ago I was shooting something in in Paris, and I invited a uh, an American Indian shaman to Paris and uh, to spend time with him there. And we we spent a lot of time together filming with um, the refugees who are living in in the streets of uh, uh, Paris. And uh, you know, as you all know, there's a lot of them. And we we got involved with one. Um, Several uh, Afghan refugees and, was, and, a, and a boxer who can't tr uh, box anymore, but he was training every day on the streets, you know, just to have a mental place going, uh, to have a mental space that he can, so he can feel strong. So my friend, who is this American Indian, my, not my friend, but this person I was filming with also, he was really amazed by these people, these refugees, and the amount of them, because it was very overwhelming. And he is 
living in America as a as sort of a third world person, right? Americans don't really, most Americans or the establishment doesn't like American Indians, so that's another story. So he felt kind of uncomfortable with these people because he felt like they should get something for being, he, he's not trained about in, in filmmaking. So one day he pulled out 10, 10 euro and he gave it to this uh, African man and this African man was almost insulted. He said, no, no. And this happened two or three times that it would, they would not accept this money. And in that case, it becomes kind of an interesting question, like, you know, because it's a cultural thing where he, if he accepted money for this, he would feel like he's not man enough to take care of himself and, you know, well, you're, why are you giving me money? Uh, you know, all these kind of things. So it, it, it's, it's very complicated. And again, we had to, you know, we would have coffee and we would have some food and stuff, and that would be a way to, um, to pay them. And the word pay is not the right word. It's a way to give them respect as human beings and, and to give them, because don't forget, all these people, they are suffering, <laughs> at least the ones I film with. They are interested in you because you alleviate a little bit of their, of their boredom. So you give them something. You tell them stories about your life, about things. So it's, that's another form of payment. You know? yeah, that's, that's a very good point. And uh, uh, what I learned in, in, in New Guinea, in West Papua, is that it's not so much the payment that is important as the device you invent in order to uh, build some sort of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, whatever the way you do it, mm -hmm. if reciprocity is achieved, which in our uh, country is um, achieved through, through payment, if you achieve reciprocity through other means, like food sharing, which is extremely important in, in New Guinea, in Melanesia, mm -hmm. Then you've achi you've attained what you wanted, mm. and and so you have you, you always have to think about ways um, that are understood locally and that can play the same role. But if in New Guinea you, you uh, arrive and, and and you put money on the table, people will not understand. They think you are buying something that is too too hard for them to give. You know, there is also this part. But there is a, a, another point. I don't know if you want to to reach that. But no, go ahead. Um, paying for what? It's not only paying, but paying for what? For instance, paying for your story, that's the rule of the game. So it's clear and it works. But in some cases, you're not asking for stories. So what would you pay for? You pay for your being there. You're being allowed to stay. And that's a completely different matter. So you would have explicitly to pay for your, your presence and not for your filming. You know what I'm saying? If you pay for filming when you are just filming uh, normal things and you're never asking people to do anything for you, uh, it becomes very weird and people uh, are very, uh, can be very suspicious even. Very suspicious, and you and and you you lose your trust, you know. I think we have sometimes we are sh shooting, huh? filming, filming, in the moment of her own work. Hmm? But then you are there if they are working, huh? mm -hmm. street sweeper, uh, uh, female tamer. You don't know if they are working, and you are filming then you don't have to pay for this moment. But for the protagonist, it's complicated that you are there. And I think we have to give them anything because they have to make... Well, if it is complicated, you shouldn't film. Hmm? If it is complicated, you shouldn't film. For them, it's perhaps a little bit complicated. If it is complicated, you should not film. Uh, that's my, uh, my own persuasion. Oh, but we have often situations where complicated, and then we have to. <laughs> if it's a problem, I don't film. Yeah, but we have. So if you get on the way of the work of the people, if you get on the way of the work or whatever, that end of the story, that you will turn your exclude back. Exclude a lot of subjects. It, it would. Of documentaries. It would. It would. That's and a it would position. open many new ways also of filming. Yeah, so but I guess what you do don't you, what do you agree? meet with, with, with com also complicate? I mean, that the person has to convince another person that they go together to this place. Huh? 
That means complicated in a sense, first of wrong word, but sometimes they have to do for us or together with us something special. Can what you give us an example? Be? Maybe from, from the, the animal um, taming film from Anka Schmidt? Maybe? No, uh, uh, perhaps we should try to stay here a bit sometimes. No, I can explain, for example, when we shoot it, this uh, old man in South uh, Egypt. Uh, he had to ask his friend to make a, a concert for him, that we can film the whole process from his house to the concert. And that was for him and his son, I would say a complicated story. We, he needed time, so we had to find a way how he can make this for us. But we have shot it in the end. But perhaps it was a, it's another point of uh, make films, what you mean? It, it depends because there are a lot of films in which you never ask, I would say, as a rule, anything. You would never ask someone to do something, to walk from a door to another door. You wouldn't ask them to do something again. So in the case you ask people to do something, maybe Payment um, has some rationality, but if you don't ask things, what what would be the rationale of payment in their own view? What would it be? It, me it, it means you are only paying for them being in front of the camera? They would not understand that because uh, when they are in front of you, they don't, they don't ask you to pay. Perhaps I understand. Now, I think it's the moment of uh, interfering. Um, if you work with the people, the they weeks where we are there are different than if we wouldn't be there. So you and acknowledge your own presence. It yeah. changes things. Yeah. That's sure. Yeah, of course. Sure. And we pay this around, this more work, this different work, this... Uh, this uh, that you can not go to work in these days. That's what I mean. Mm. But if we, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> no, but I, Because I, I think we, have, we, we are doing different films. That's yes. the point. I think yes, yes. We, have, we are doing total different films. Yeah. We are That not ethnologic films. Yeah. We are not shooting with anybody only one day. Mm. We mm. are filming with people for long time, mm -hmm. but they are working together with us. And we are filming with them about a subject, what they are interested also. It's a little bit, as you said, it was a promotion film. I wouldn't say promotion, but if uh, they said, problem. for me, it's inter yeah, that's so important. That pe that's pers one point what we didn't uh, speak about now that the subject of the film often for the protagonist is very important that the world can see what they have, the problems what they have, or the knowledge what they have. And I think that's also finally the main reason why they want to work with us. No money. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, I mean, I can only speak about my own experience, but, but when I'm making a film, I always think, okay, I'm going to be involved, a documentary film, I'm going to be involved in something for a long time. And I, I leave it open. If I, you know, for, because most of the time, look, if, I'm, if I shoot a film and, and I'm filming an, a total of 100 hours, I know that most of the, much of the material I will not use, but I'm, I have to be there because there's a process I'm going through, and they have to get the the people in front of my camera are getting used to me, and they're becoming used to my camera, and as they are getting used to my camera and me, I'm also finding a, a, a position from which I like to film because for me the the right moment and the right angle is really important, and it takes time to find that, but at the same time, usually, if something is important that happened and I didn't film it for whatever reason, I don't care because it'll, some, it'll happen again and again and again. So, so for me, it's not that important. If somebody doesn't want me to film something, I don't care. 
but I'll find something in that situation that'll film it because I don't necessarily need that. Maybe I need something else. And this is hard to define with words, but this whole process is a kind of, it's a performance for me. And I'm involved with the performance and somehow this payment issue is involved here, but it's not necessarily I pay you $10 or $50 or $100, but I'm with you, we'll eat together, I'll pay for the beer, I'll do this. And then there's an evolution of all this. And at the end of the day, this is all a payment. But it's a payment that is constructed by me and my situation with my budget and everything else. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's weird. Like somebody will get, I can only give this person the equivalent of $10, but this person who has spent much less time with me and is less important, they end up getting $30 worth of beer or something, I don't know, because they need it or something, you know? So you have to, it, it, you have to be very fluid here and there's a kind of a personal ethic that you have to go into to see how this is going to work in order for me to make the best film that I can. And then, of course, there's a, there's a whole editing process which is the, the insane thing where you cut out everything that you thought was important and you use the things that maybe you, you know, didn't spend any money for, you know? So, you know, you, you jump into a performance in life, and, and that performance yeah, needs a little bit of money to feed things, you know, because nobody, we all have to eat. Mm. I can't work unless I get money from whoever's financing my film, and these people can't work unless they get something from me in that kind of a way, because there's the, there, there's the unspoken energy that's going on here, which is they need to feel, um, they need to feel like, they have the energy to give me energy because if I'm draining their energy because my presence is like, oh, he's here again. At five <laughs> o'clock in the morning, he's like, you have to wake up in front of the camera. You know, they can only do that so much, but it does happen, you know. So you have to work this out. So I'll have, I'll say it to myself, okay, I, I need three wake up sequences or I need, you know, somebody shooting up on a camera. You know, how much money do they want for the drugs? I mean, all these things become really interesting and important to deal with but it's not the kind of thing that you would write into a contract. No, oh, I'm no, going no. to give the junkie f uh, 10 <laughs> hits, 100 euros for 10 hits, <laughs> but I will give him money in some way or another because uh, that's, how it, that's how it is, and I've been there, and I've, it's happened to me. Uh, so, you, you know, it's complicated. But what you're saying, uh, in fact, is that payment or uh, exchange of money is the outcome of a relationship, and the relationship has to be built. And in many occasions, um, paying upfront quickly and having a paper signed uh, very quickly is a, v is a way of eschewing the relation, uh, relationship building or relation building. And so it's very, uh, it, it goes absolutely against what we are trying to do. That is building a relationship in which interest and things like that have to take place, of course. Um, are part of it, but paying upfront in a journalistic American way, I come, you sign, you get the money, and now you buzz off, of course, this is not what we want, because the, the outcome is terrible. Yeah. The, the English that, do that, the Germans do that, all, 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 the, all the dominant cultures <laughs> do that, you know, <laughs> because, but we're talking about a creative documentary, Whoever, yeah. here, right, so then we draw yeah. a line here. Uh, to me, it's really kind of weird to call a documentary creative anyway, but you know, it's another story. Mm. <laughs> um, so we've been speaking for an hour, so I'd like to open the discussion also to the audience. But maybe just shortly, what I think I get of this whole discussion is that basically every film is different, but whatever uh, kind of documentary you're making, being, being a Panganda film, or creative documentary, or any kind of ethnographic film or essay film, and also whichever ethical base you are building uh, the relationship on. The, I think the term that I will remember from this is reciprocity. So whatever kind of setting you're working on, the reciprocity is the first thing that comes um, um, as a subject of importance before money, before payment. So we are we still have uh, time uh, in front of us so maybe you can I don't know can you There's a microphone coming Thank you very much this is a very good discussion and in my experience I agree so much of what you've been said Stefan if you can be uh, concrete um, there you are in le ciel dans un jardin 
Okay, uh, this is in uh, New Guinea. And um, you say you pay for accommodation. How do you evaluate what, the, what you would pay for your accommodation? I do not. Reciprocity is not based on your own judgment. You have to talk, you have to feel, you have to discuss, you have to smell. Sure. So, so my question is, mm. can you be concrete about what that looked like or what it's happened concretely? I, I, in the case of New Guinea, it's very different because uh, food was for free. But not for me because I didn't have a garden. So I had to buy food. So how did I buy it? By exchanging for uh, medicines antibiotics, and I would take care of a lot of people, and in exchange, I would always ask for food. I would never do it for free. And um, that was my way of showing that what I was doing had importance. Because it's not only the people you have in front of you who are uh, giving you something important. You also are giving something important. And that's what I call reciprocity. Reciprocity is the opposite of paternalism. If you give away your medicine for free, it means you're above the lot. It means you, you can afford it. It means you're a good Samaritan. If you exchange food for medicine, but in a, not in a harsh way, in a normal way, then people uh, feel it's, it's, um, they understand that and they can relate to that and they like it. Actually, I discovered that this reciprocity is uh, exactly what they preferred rather than being given things. So in every situation, you have to find the right way. That is the way that will not put you under and the way that will not put you above but that will put you on a par. At the only condition, the par is reciprocity. Once it is you, once it is them. I just want to add something to that. I had a situation where I was filming with farmers, <clears throat> and there was a farmer who has, uh, he was kind of a poor farmer in the context of, you know, uh, um, uh, like American kind of farming, right? You know. Um, where the farmer has more income coming from different places. So this farmer needed, um, he wanted to have some pigs and he couldn't afford the pigs. So I figured, okay, let me buy a pig for him or two pigs actually. And so we went and we filmed him buying the pig. He paid, I gave him the money, he paid for it. But the thing is that that fig, uh, pig provided months of things to shoot around that. And then he, the pigs had babies and et cetera, et cetera. So it's a kind of, reciprocity also, you know, but without paying him for it. And I think that he felt better that I bought the pig than if I gave him the money because it was like, you know, he, he under, you can understand a pig, a piglet, but, you know, money is, has a different kind of thing. I mean, money is also the devil. So you have to also think about that when you're dealing with people because money, ch money changes things. I mean, I, you know, when, when people... In, in your families, when somebody dies and everybody's arguing about the money they're going to inherit, every the whole family dynamic changes, and this could happen in a film with with, with money. So you have to be very careful about this. Uh, when you say money is the devil, be careful because this is what we would think here. But in many parts of the world, we would not say that because money is not the devil; it is the soul of society, and that's exactly the case in Melanesia, where there is nothing important that is not accomplished without money. So, once again, we have to be very careful because the, the ways with the things uh, in one part is, not, is different. No, uh, yeah, the know. context is really important. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's the, it's the idea of what money represents in Western society that has to be really understood by the filmmaker mm. because if, you feel, if I feel like I'm buying someone's story, mm. then I don't feel good. I am adding something to this person's life with a little bit of money, but I never want to buy someone's story in that kind of way. Okay, we'll give, here's a contract for $100,000, give yeah. us your story. Then it's, sh then it's a Hollywood film. You yeah, know? exactly. So yeah. that's different, you know. Exactly. There's another question here. Hello, I think that's a very important point about um, <clears throat> the different societies and how people perceive material goods and things. Um, but in, in a lot of societies where I come from in Africa, 
whether it's money or food or um, an exchange of, of other kinds of goods, each and everything has a different kind of value and is perceived differently. My question is, um, and I've seen this a lot, how do filmmakers from other cultures come into a culture where the rules are unwritten, you can't Google it, and very subtle, how do you come into a country and, and, and build up that kind of education? Um, because I don't see it often being built into people's research plans. It's a question of time, taking time. So, so sorry, I didn't exactly uh, really uh, understand the question because I was thinking about how we, when we went years ago to Namibia and we had the music project and um, we had a lot of time for the researchers and we, we didn't pay the people during this research time. We paid the musician for the performance but in the research, we, uh, it was research. It's, it's so difficult to explain what you mean. If we go in a country, we take our time, we want to find out with who we want to work. And then we find out also how we want to work together. The musician from Namibia said, if we participate in this film, we would like, for example, to make minimum five concerts and performance in this country. So we had to discuss with them what they can do or what we can do that we agree that we are doing the film together, what they get back from themselves and their career, not money, but without money. But we had to be there in the research is also together with cultural help, uh, cultural, uh, cultural, uh, cultural um, people who helped us to understand. And we have made mistakes. I can say we have made a lot of mistakes there. Um, just to expand on the wait. question just quickly. No, 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 no. How long will you, uh, because I think that's also kind of what was in your question, like how long will you, will it take you to do this research phase and how, how which which percentage of the budget will it take um, this 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 phase of research to actually know how to how to work in this particular society which is not yours that's something like a collaborator and this uh, now we have to find the world the the person the advocate who is going between the cultures, what's the word? Uh, and we can we, we pay them as some weeks if we work together as director and, and this person who knows both. The chance is all the time if they have both, they know both cultures. I, I, I just want to comment on this. Yeah, I mean, this is. This is a, I mean, it's a very complicated question because, I mean, I never filmed in Africa, but I've been in maybe similar kind of situations that where I'm aware that the camera and my presence is a, could be a form of colonialism. And what I mean by that is that, that um, you know, when, when let, let's reverse that. Imagine, for instance, if a, an African filmmaker came to America and he had to make a film there, and he would be looking at America from his or her own point of view, finding things interesting about America that maybe I would not, because you know, if I'm, a part of me is American, so I would not look at those things. And if that person um, would f try to ask me what do I want from that person in the form of payment, um, I would ha have to evaluate that somehow, you know, uh, in, in, in maybe a different way than, than I would in, in, in the other, going the other way. So it's, it's a complicated question because if, for me to, to know um, the various 
degrees of of uh, compensation and forms of compensation and how they relate to that person's culture, I think that you have to be quite knowledgeable of the culture, and and that takes time. And 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 I'm not an ambulance chaser, meaning I don't look at the New York Times and find a story and say, okay, here's a great story to be made in South Africa. I'm going to fly there and, and shoot something. I would have to know something about that culture for me to go there. So that means I'm already approaching it from the point of view of some deep interest, you know, maybe my mother was from there. My mother happened, you know, at one point my, my mother lived in in um, in Africa and I had this idea of going there to make a film because she was living there in a uh, um, a camp for displaced people after World War II. So I had this idea about shooting something in Lake Victoria. So we, we did some research, but I know nothing about the culture in any kind of deep way. So I don't know how to answer that other than saying that if I really wanted to make that film, then I would have to spend some time before I even get the financing and get to there. You know, maybe sell some, you know, sell some drugs <laughs> so I can get an airplane flight and spend time there. But it's the re filmmaker's responsibility to do that outside of the whole business structure so that the filmmaker, is, in my case anyways, because the film is not going to be only for a television project, it's going to be because I want to make something that's really personally important to me. So you you have to sort of figure out all this stuff. I don't think any of these, uh, there's an easy answer for any of these things because it's, I, at the end of the day, each filmmaker is, is his or her own um, uh, sort of energy uh, force. And that energy force has to in, in, incorporate all this research and ethics and, and all that stuff into what they're doing. You know, I, I'm, I'm not making a film for CNN where they fly me out and for four days. I mean, I, I once was working for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I was, I was, one of the, I was a creative director for a, a, uh, the films that they were going to put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, museum in Cleveland. And they flew me out to... Uh, to Seattle to make a film about grunge, and they only had enough money for two days in Seattle, which is insane. So I, I, I rented a, a plane, and we flew uh, uh, and got some shots from the, from, the, from the plane, and then one day I went to this club, which was like the main um, club for that music scene, and um, it was grunge, and I asked one guy who was kind of well-known, well, well, you know, I'd like to film you, and the guy looked at me, he said, he thought about it, and he said, well, you know, man, I don't want to be a rung in your ladder. <laughs> Meaning he said he's not interested in, because he had this feeling that if I shoot him, it'll be only for my benefit and not for his benefit. A rung in the ladder, do you know what that means? Uh, you know, the things you step on. So that's kind of, you know, it's another way of looking at this payment thing. So there's a question here, and there was one over here. F I don't know. Do you I have the microphone. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'm a film student in Munich, and I found myself in a quite weird situation recently, and I was wondering what your take on this would be. Um, so we went to Vietnam to do a journalistic piece as part of our schoolwork, and we were four people. I was a cinematographer. There was the director student. There was a project advisor who had already studied anthropology, and there was the producer. He was uh, half Vietnamese but grew up in Switzerland. And he, the money came from the school, but he sort of had it in his pocket and distributed it. And we went out to shoot a film about whether people are happy there in a very quite poor region in the south, in the Mekong Delta. And we, we rented a boat and we went down the river. And then sometimes we saw someone that we thought looked interesting. We got off the boat and then we stopped to film this woman. She was pushing her cart. She was selling food and... We had allocated money for the protagonists as a reimbursement for their time, but we usually spent maybe 15 minutes just asking them a quick question. Sometimes we spent an hour with them. So this particular lady, we spent 15 minutes, and I saw the producer giving her 25 euros, which for us, of course, is nothing, but it would have uh, been the equivalent of four times her daily income. And I just... Afterwards, I just said that I that I thought it was a little bit weird that we were there just getting off a boat and sort of dropping four times the amount of what, like if it was for me, the, the amount of that I would earn in a day. Of, uh, and, the, and the girl, who, or the woman who had studied anthropology was like, well, it would make me very happy if someone gave me four times the amount of what I made in a day in 15 minutes. I'm like, yes, I know it's happiness maybe, but also I find it a little bit, ethically, I find it a little bit weird, like also in, you know... 
I, I don't know, just, and then she said, I'm, you know, short with money or something and that I shouldn't say anything. And I'm just wondering, what, what would you have argued? I, I, I don't think it is ethically that it is weird. It is cinematographically. What can you expect after 15 minutes? <laughs> that's another question. Yeah. yeah, but that's the basic question. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, you're going to get uh, enough for your 25 bucks. That is very little. Well, I, I actually have an answer for that. Um, uh, Odile is here, and she's my producer. So you should have invited Odile because she's very good about this kind of stuff. She wouldn't have got not the producer would have made sure that this money wouldn't have uh, been given to this person on this level. No, I'm I, I'm making a joke out of it, but I mean the person who gave this local person money, is he or she Vietnamese? Okay, so there's some kind of guilt thing going on and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is something you have to, you know, this is the dynamics of making a movie is communicating with your crew and talking about this. There is no answer for this because once it happened, then you have to sit down and say, let's have a drink, let's discuss this, you know? <laughs> okay, you feel guilty because you're half Vietnamese, blah, blah, but you know what you're doing? You're doing a disservice to us in the in the bigger picture, because, because there, people are going to think, oh, look at those idiots from Germany, you know, this wealthy country, you know, the wealth second wealthiest country in the world. People come in here and they're just dropping money. I mean, this kind of thing. I don't know. You have to get it, you have to talk to people, you know, and it's a lesson for you. You're a student, right? So make sure that it doesn't happen next time. But uh, uh, I think that there is a rule of thumb: if you don't sleep at people's at the people's place, you cannot get anything from them. If you just drop by and ask for. Uh, a, a couple of stupid questions for 15 minutes, you will never get anything. Never. That's the wrong way to do. So you spend a few days, you know who they are, and, and then you can go. But a uh, couple of minutes? No way. I think that's one point. The other point for me is we go in a big discussion about neocolonialism, and I'm thinking about why why should go uh, young people to shoot 50 minutes in a country like this? What they are elephants. You are elephants in the wie heißt das so schon the bar? Elephants in the porcelain place. And mm. I think if you go to another country, you need time to understand a little bit what's going on there. And I'm afraid of this kind because we have so much money. You go three days there. Uh, we had so much discussions also in Namibia and Ethiopia. Of, we said we have uh, filled a lot of uh, burnt field because the television station was there. They have done three hours. They ha took everything from the people. They never come back. They show never anything again. They don't give. And that's another discussion. And I'm I'm a little bit sad about that we are so rich that we can even as film students go for two days to Vietnam. Sorry. Quite, quite honestly, it's a, it's it's rather pornographic. But that's my personal problem. <laughs> 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 it, 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 three weeks. Just three weeks. Oh, three, okay, three weeks. But this is exactly <laughs> the case we discussed earlier. There is a way of paying that is akin to getting rid of the relationship. And this is exactly the contrary I think we would like to defend. That is, when you build a relationship, money has to be part of it. But if money serves to get rid of the relationship, it's a mistake. There is only one leg. Um, I think it's, it's uh, we, we shouldn't talk only about going to other countries or other culture yeah. context because in the end, it's also a very personal thing. And I think the question is, if you ask yourself, what would I expect if somebody came to me and say, I want to have you in my film because I'm interested in the way you live or in the way you work or whatever, what would I expect to say yes first? Um, and then, Secondly, also the money question. And if you if you ask yourself sincerely this question, I, for for example, for me it wouldn't be a nice idea to have a director sleeping in my place, as you <laughs> suggested. You're yeah. talking about, you know what I mean. So it's it's always also a question of how would I react. Yeah. And first of the first thing is 
that this person has to understand who I am and I, he has to, I have to understand why this director wants to film me. That's the first thing. I have to understand that and I have to agree to the idea of his film. And then in a second point, I would say, okay, if, if you film me like three days, uh, whatever, and I can't work in that time, uh, I would like you to pay me for this time. But this is the second question, not, not the first. And I think it's a good idea always to, to ask yourself, what would I do if, and then you have to understand what kind of person this is and how to deal with that. And uh, the money is the second question, not the first, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, I think that any time I've gone out to make a movie, I would, a lot of time is spent just discussing things with people and talking with people. I don't even think about the money or anything else because I'm trying to figure out Am I interested in this person? How do I talk to this person? What do we have in common? What are we trying to do uh, together or not try to do it together? And then later on, this idea of money comes into it from a practical point of view. But I really, I never think about money in the beginning because I'm, all I'm thinking about is, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, filmmaking is like, is like a drug, you know? You know, it's like you have like, you know, in, in your life, you go through your cycle of your life. When you're 20 years old, you have certain ideas and interests. When you're 30, you're, you have different ideas, and, and you get older and older, and you have, but these ideas are things that are bothering you, that you're interested in, that you're fascinated by. They're kind of in your soul, and you try to express that with your subject matter in some way, so they understand it, and you bring, you, you create kind of a rapport, and, and that rapport changes over a period of time, but um, that's the most important thing, is to explore that, this energy field, and these ideas, and then the practicality comes into it, but you know, we started with this conversation from a pr practicality point of view, and also as a provocation in the time of extreme capitalism. You know, what is the subject matter worth? Because that's very important. What is your story worth in the in the world of capitalism, where the film is going to be shown here, and somebody in the festival is making money because they work for the festival, and the festival has to get good films in, so they have a whole infrastructure here. You know, do they pay for my salary for my flight here? I mean, there's a lot of questions that are all ultimately connected to money in one way or the other because, you know, money's a devil, but it also makes the world go around. So, you know, these are complicated things that I think are very hard to just put into categories, but you have to be aware of all of them. And the, the, the more you're aware of the whole big picture, the easier it is to make decisions along the way because maybe you don't have enough money to make this film right. because, you know, you're limited, so make the film differently. You know, maybe don't go. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't do ethnographic films because it's a very special subject. But I make films mostly in my own culture, or my, my own culture meaning, you know, the white <laughs> male world of reality that I'm part of, and you know, th all the things that th that's all about. You know, that's what I make movies about. You know, because that's that's what I'm interested in, and and um, the ethnographic thing, going to another culture. I have done that. I've been to Afghanistan, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have different, you know, different things are presented to me. You know, when you're shooting in, Af I was in Afghanistan right after the Americans finished bombing and I was filming in orphan orphanages. And it was really insane because these people had, you know, these poor kids had nothing. And the country had nothing. And the war was going on and all these people from around the world were there to try to set up businesses in Afghanistan, you know, people from Sweden, Germany, America, et cetera, et cetera. And in the meantime, all these kids were being lost. And how do you film these kids? What do you do? You know, you know, give them candy. I mean, th these are, there's no answer for it. You know, I dealt with it the best way I can, but I still have those images in my mind that I filmed and I'll never forget them because it was, I just, I always wonder what happened to those people, you know? But you know, I couldn't give any of them anything except for there's like you know a hundred kids all starving behind a, a, a fence looking at me with their faces. What do I do? I mean, I you know I shoot them, I have I hang out with them a little bit, I give them a, f a few of them something, and I, and I have to go because that's 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 that was the situation. But it's a real it's a real situation, you know. So so you, you know I have to come up with my own answers at the moment that this was happening, and at least leave some energy there that I think maybe is they would find interesting. But who knows? I, I would like to add something because it seems to me that uh, 
unless we do a film about our mom and dad, we, which is more and more trendy, <laughs> um, we, we, which is a way to uh, eschew the fact that we are talking with someone else, um, we are always doing ethnographic films, in a way. When you're going to a different place, see different people, another social class, you're uh, an intellectual, a filmmaker, whatever, and you go see blue colors or you know people from the working class or black people in your neighborhood, you're drug dealers, junkies, you're always doing something that uh, verges on the, on, uh, I don't know if you can say, that, on the side of ethnography, which just means you have to pay attention to what they think because it's a little bit different from what you think. So only relying on you, as you said, yes. But at the same time, be careful, because you never know. People would feel uh, different, would feel things are uh, not right the way you put them. So it's not only how would I, how would I uh, feel. I understand, of yeah, course, it's, it's just one other question you have to ask yourself. It's not the yeah. only one, that's yeah. for sure. Maybe just a last question or remarks in the audience. Yes. Um, hello. Uh, uh, I just uh, just want to share a uh, personal experience with me. Uh, last two years back, I made a uh, short film about undocumented migrants who living in Switzerland for the festival of film uh, uh, Bern, a short film festival. And um, fortunately, we won the first prize. So uh, uh, what happened in the prize giving, the, the lady that I filmed, I made a small interview with her, and I made a short film with that subject. And uh, I thought it could be a good idea to give the money to her, because we won a money prize. And maybe uh, she can use for um, going back to the vacons in, uh, holidays in some other countries, Italy or some other countries. She's origin from Chile. And uh, when, when we received the envelope, I just said, I just want to uh, uh, verify how much we got, because I don't know. And uh, I just tried to send, uh, I give back to her. Uh, she refused. I thought maybe it could be really useful, keep, keep, it, keep with you. And I put uh, inside to her handbag. Just two days back, uh, she sent me the same money with a the, with the small envelope, and she mentioned that try to use this money to make a new film about another undocumented migrant. <laughs> I just want a personal experience. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for this last word on how we can, that's one subject that we did not touch, like how do we use maybe the money prize or the benefit from the film, even if we don't do blockbusters with documentaries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that would be the topic for another talk. Um, thank you, everyone, for being so attentive and for the great question in the audience and also to our speaker here. So they'll be around for the rest of the festival, kind of. You too, Francesca, maybe not. No. You're leaving. <laughs> so Lesh and Stefan are here. So uh, I wish you all the good festival. And don't forget to take bags or a magazine on your way out. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.